from a bizarre encounter on a hot summer day to a strange body pain that only seems to be getting progressively worse. These are two extremely creepy stories sent in by subscribers. I'm Fearcrawler. Happy Friday the 13th. So this happened a few years back. I was about 11. My dad owns a bounce house company, so we went to set up a bounce house somewhere. Well, it was miserably hot that day, so I decided I would go sit in the car in the air conditioning. I was playing on my phone when suddenly I hear a small beep noise. I looked and there was an old man who was probably in his 60s in a Volkswagen. He motioned with his finger for me to come over to him. My dad is also a cop, so I know all about stranger danger. So I shook my head no. Then he got out of his car and came up and pulled on the car door handle. Thank God it was locked. He seemed pissed when he realized it was locked, so he asked me to roll down the window. By this point, I was crying and hyperventilating from fear. At that point, my dad came over and said, What's going on? And apparently this old guy said, I just wanted to show her my dancing chicken toy. And when my dad told me that, I thought it was odd. The scariest part was, he said, let me get it out of my car. He then got in his car and quickly took off. I'm terrified to even think what would have happened if I had gotten out of the car. Let me preface this by saying that this took place in 1997. I was around 15 years old at the time. I'm one of the many guys that grew up without a father figure in his life, and therefore I became part of the Big Brothers and Big Sisters program. For those of you that don't know what that is, it's a program that's based in the United States. It takes at-risk youth and provides them with a mentor. This program honestly saved my life. So with that little bit of information out of the way, Here's where the story begins. My big brother was working as a divorce attorney at the time. His time at the office was winding down and he was looking into further business ventures in order to have a decent income when he left. He had been reading into oyster farming and giving it a shot in a few of the surrounding areas. This is pretty easy to do when you're living in the marshland areas of New Jersey. After doing this for a few months and having a rather impressive turnover, he decided to try his hand internationally. After doing some research, he decided he would start in Ecuador. For him, this was a win-win. He traveled a bit, but never visited anywhere in South America. So he'd be able to spot a possible location, plus scratch something off of his bucket list. The trip itself lasted about two weeks, and when he came home, he picked me up and we went out to dinner. The trip had been pretty successful overall. He managed to find five locations, got a slew of amazing photos, and the memories would be something he would never forget. The last bit, however, well, let's call it a mixed bag. About two days after his return, he developed a noticeable limp. He kept complaining about his right foot being insanely sore and itchy. At first, he thought he may have developed a fungal infection due to the fact that he traveled almost everywhere in Ecuador on foot, wearing open-toed sandals. But day four, his foot had swollen to almost twice its size. This was when he made the conscious decision to go to the doctor. He wasn't expecting anything other than being told that he was in need of something along the lines of an antifungal cream. So the game plan was, he would pick me up, and we would go to lunch afterwards. I'm sitting there in the doctor's office with him, and he explains to the doctor the exact events leading up to this. While he was explaining to the doctor what happened, with the whole open toe sandal thing. He neglected to tell me one little detail. When he was scouting the second location, he ended up slicing the side of his foot on a rock. He had a med kit in his backpack, but the only thing he had to clean the wound with was saline spray. The cut honestly wasn't that bad, so he went ahead and sprayed it, and then slapped on a bandage. 
He then went about his merry way looking at the other locales for roughly four hours in dense Ecuadorian rainforest. By the time he'd made his way back to what I guess you could call a base camp, he was exhausted, and honestly he had forgot to go into the med kit and grab the antiseptic. He told the doctor that the hammock that was set up just outside of his tent was looking really good at that point. He was practically asleep before his head hit the pillow. By the time he woke up, the sun was starting to set. He had been down for several hours. This was his second to last day in Ecuador. He started noticing the itch while he was on the flight home. The doctor cocked an eyebrow, and I could see a visible look of concern on his face. He told my big brother he was going to run some cultures in order to rule out a fungal infection, or some other possible cause like a tropical form of poison ivy. He was also going to do an x-ray. The x-ray is where the excrement hit the fan. The doctor came back into the office with one of those miniature surgery kits. Numbing spray, lidocaine, scalpel, suture and needles. He looks at my big brother and simply says, Get up on the table. Now. My big brother starts to freak out a little. What's going on, Doc? The less you know, the better. Just understand we found something on the x-ray and it needs to be cut out. My big brother looked over at me and I was just as freaked out as him. He took a deep breath, hopped up on the table, and put his foot up, and the doctor went to work. I had a full view of the entire procedure. I'm sitting there trying to keep my composure. A little fact about me, I'm an absolute horror junkie. But when it comes to the real thing, I don't handle it very well. So I'm sitting there watching the doctor flay his foot and insert surgical tweezers into the wound, removing something each time. I got a better look at what was being removed. They were roughly the size of a navy bean. This happened no less than six times before I finally got an even better look at these foreign objects. Whatever they were, they were squirming. I excused myself saying that I needed to use the bathroom. I figured that would work a little better and be a lot less concerning than, I'm gonna puke. I barely got the door shut behind me before I did just that. I went back into the office after a little less than 10 minutes of collecting myself in the bathroom and splashing some water on my face. I'm back in the doctor's office and he was suturing up the foot in question. This is when the explanation began. He walked over to my big brother and held up a little jar with nine larvae in it. Sometime between cutting his foot and taking the extended nap, a botfly had laid eggs in the wound. Antiseptic or not, due to the fact that he was walking around in open-toed shoes with an open wound, it was bound to happen. Yeah, I know you're thinking, but he bandaged the wound as well. Well, apparently not well enough. Needless to say, the lunch plans were cancelled. Our appetites were shot to hell at that point. So before I finish this up, I'm going to leave you with the lesson that I learned from this. No matter what kind of forest you're hiking in, never do it in open-toed sandals. Hiking boots exist for a reason, and they don't necessarily need to be expensive. If you do manage to injure yourself, clean out the wound with soap, water, and alcohol. And for God's sakes, make sure the wound is properly covered. A wound getting slightly infected can be annoying, but trust me when I say this, Becoming the host for a parasitic insect is way freaking worse. That's all for today's video. I do hope you enjoyed. Until next time, everyone take care, be safe, and above all, stay scared. <laughs>